Hi, my name is B, and I'm a priestess of Caradwen, actually the first priestess of Caradwen, because I reclaimed the title for all those who come after me. It doesn't make me any more special than anyone else. It's just that I took the courage of conviction to, to actually commit to this dark goddess. I used to uh, follow and be a devotee of Hecate, but then I moved to Wales in 2003 and goddess Hecate said to me, so very well, thank you very much for your service, but I'm going to hand you over now to Caledwen, my dark sister. And I was like, who? I had never heard of Caledwen, apart from, which I realized years later, in the Charge of the Goddess by Doreen Valiente, in which she is actually mentioned. Amongst quite illustrious goddesses that everybody knows, when I first started this path um, some 25 years ago now, I... I only ever found out about the Roman and the Greek goddesses because truthfully, that was all that everybody else was working with. It was only a little later before the internet. You can imagine what it was like before the internet. You couldn't really, you had to go to the library and actually read up about goddesses. And we, don't, we didn't have what you have now, which is an amazing array of research into all sorts of goddesses. We didn't have any of that when we first started on the path of the goddess. And it was probably Starhawk that started me off with her spiral dance. And from there, I wanted to read more, learn more, do more. Following the goddess is a wonderful path. It's given me a lot of peace, a lot of confidence, a lot of calm. And nowadays, I am actually a full-time priestess in Glastonbury, Avalon. I work for the Goddess Temple. I am a healer in Goddess House. I am a priestess, a ceremonial priestess for the Goddess Temple. You probably will see me if you are tuning in on Thursday evening when we do our online virtual Zoom seasonal ceremony for Beltane. And I am also a conference priestess, so once a year, the goddess community comes together here in Glastonbury Avalon to celebrate all things goddess. And this year, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we won't be able to do that, but we will still be online, and I hope some of you will be able to join us. Caledwen is, in the Avalonian wheel, the goddess of death and rebirth. She holds the cauldron of life and death. She holds the cauldron of testing. And when this pandemic started, I was pretty clueless when it came to technology and Zoom and, you know, goddess forbid, YouTube life. I was terrified. I didn't have the confidence. I didn't have the, um, yeah, there was a little bit of vanity, you know, how will I look on camera? Probably not very well being an elder, but it was actually one of the things that Caridon is really good at, and that's kicking your butt. When you most resist her call to do something, to bring her into the world, to shine your light, to stand up for her, for goddess and for all that she stands for, that Caridon says to you, come on now, you've got this. What, are you have, what have you got to be scared of? People don't kill you anymore, and they used to. Remember, some of us remember that. And she says, stand up. Stand up for what you believe in. As you can see, I wear a tattoo with a moon. That is the sign of the priestess of Avalon, but not every priestess wears that. A lot of priestesses still fear persecution, and there is persecution. We still get quite nasty remarks and comments when we show our faith, when we show our pathway. Whether that is not getting a job or whether that is somebody scratching your car or whether that is not getting a seat in a restaurant because you've got a tattoo on your head. Not that that matters to me. 
But Caradwen is the one that strengthens us when there are dark times. She shows us that there is such a thing as the other world of which she is the queen, Anun, the summer lands, the Western Isles. Caradwen is the queen of a particular realm. She is the one that takes the dying and the dead through the veil. She is the one that holds them, that soothes them. She is the one that allows the souls to come to peace with the fact that they have gone. And in this pandemic, there's quite a few people who have died. I firmly believe that they had a soul contract to die at this time, but some people feel that these souls are in torment. I don't want to say limbo because that's a Christian concept, but they feel that these souls are lost and confused. Because I believe in Caradwen, I don't follow that belief. I think she is there when somebody passes through the veil. She she pulls them close into her embrace and she guides them to where they need to go. That there are other souls that have elected to be with her to help the soul get used to the new accommodation, so to speak, to find a rest until such time as they are ready to reincarnate again, if they so wish. The Celtic belief on the whole is that you don't necessarily have to reincarnate as a human being, that in fact you can reincarnate as anything you like, that all souls and all existences are equally valid. It's a really good belief. It is something that Carolyn shows us in her story. And it's a really good belief because part of us humans feeling arrogantly that we are special, better than on the top of the food chain is what has caused what is happening in the world right now the greed, the consumption of Mother Earth, the dirtying of our air, our water streams, the frantic running around, the not being at peace. What she's doing right now, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, is stopping us. She tried everything else. She sent us messengers, she sent us events, she kept warning us, and we wouldn't listen. As a species, we wouldn't listen. And I myself don't feel like I'm any better than anyone else. So for me, she has now sent us this time where we come to a full stop, an absolute quiet and calm. And when I go outside into my garden, and I do that a lot because there's not, not many places we are allowed to go, I can hear the birds this morning, beautiful raven, one of Caradon's birds. And I can hear the birds and I can hear the bees. There's no noise from the street. Everything is calm and quiet. I don't have anywhere to go. I don't have necessarily a lot to do. Usually I'd be in Goddess House healing, visitors that have come to Glastonbury to, as pilgrims, as seekers, or I serve in the temple on the high street where I hold space once a week for two hours or more if, I have, if I'm needed. All of that is gone. Everything is closed. There is no place for us now to go and rush to. And it's actually really peaceful. And I, I embrace that because it's given me time to find what is actually important. We get so wrapped up in our own lives. We get so wrapped up in what we need to do, what needs doing now, that we don't actually feel or find what's deep in our heart. And Caradwen is the one that says to me, okay, so this is happening. It is not the end of the world. It doesn't need to be the end of the world if you all learn from this. And she allows me to think. And with being at peace, 
every day, every morning. She also allows me to hear her voice much, much more than I ever do when I'm already in my head thinking I've got to get washed, dressed, temple at 10 o'clock, all of that. What do I have to do today? When you have the time, when you have the peace, when you're not necessarily rushing around, it's much easier to hear the voice of the divine on this earth. Whether that is the divine mother earth, which we're celebrating this year in the conference, which makes total sense to me now that we are not allowed to travel, air travel, driving, whatever, that we have to do everything online, saving all of that energy and bringing it back to Mother Earth. And then it's allowing me to download the transmissions of inspiration, goddess of inspiration, Caradwen inspires all of us, not necessarily to write poetry or songs or whatever, but to actually create, be in creation with others. And I really love that about her. She's so very special to me. And she brings messages of peace and silence and love and care. She brings us the message that we have time now to think about what it is that we want to do at the end of this ordeal. And it is an ordeal because if you are going towards initiation into a new paradigm, there has to be an ordeal. You have to go through fire in order to come out, cleanse the other side. I'm not denying that there is not terrible loss and that there is not terrible fear. But somehow when you have faith in goddess, when you have faith in Caridwen, for me, that's my goddess of my heart, that fear is mitigated by the knowledge that she is with me always, at all times. That she loves me, that her mantle of protection is all around me. And all around anyone else that wishes, don't have to be a priestess to work with Caridwen. She doesn't actually ask for that at all. She just asks for you to hear, to listen, to connect, to be good to the earth, to allow the herbs to speak, give you their wisdom, their healing, allow the birds to speak. We can learn so much from the other beings on this planet. We are here for the love of all existences. So why not listen to their wisdom? They've been here a lot longer than we have as human beings. And the trees, of course, the beautiful trees our standing people who have been here so much longer than we have, that have seen everything, that have remembered everything. They have been through these times before, times of when human civilization has once again overstepped the mark, become a problem to the whole world and has been wiped out. I'm not saying that's going to happen now. But what I am saying is that if we don't listen to all the divine beings, if we don't listen to ourselves, if we don't adjust our course at this time, if we don't settle down, stop rushing around, stop consuming all the earth resources, if we don't hold faith, with all the other beings on this planet. And that is a true and clear message from Caradwen. The earth will find a way. She's warning us now. She's asking us to listen. And Caradwen is the goddess of herbs and healing in the Welsh mythology. It's the whole story of Caradwen is about her brewing a cauldron of medicine for her son, Avakthi. And it's all about the healing of the herbs, the healing that we have in reciprocity with the earth, that we can receive if we open ourselves. She is the dark mother, but she's also the old mother to me. She is the ultimate mother to all of us. 
And at the moment, and I really like that on Facebook, I did like that meme. We've all been sent to our room to think about what we've done. And I believe that's true. Keridwen can bring us to a screeching halt. If we don't want to listen to what she has to say, you will find yourself, she's a bit of a, you know, a hard taskmaster at times, and you can find yourself really confined to barracks to think about what you've done. Um, she's a great deal of fun. She loves singing. And the Caridun priestesses all love a good sing song. And, and we don't care. We call ourselves the Wailing Witches. I love that. That's really great. We've done that for almost 12 years. The Wailing Witches, Caridun's girls. But singing is actually a way of raising energy. And at the moment, on the Goddess Temple page on Facebook, I'm doing exercises every Wednesday at 2 to do um to teach people how to sing or sound or tone. And I am not a musician by any means. I'm not a singer by any means either. But I find the joy in raising my voice for my goddess. And that's really all that matters to me. And I would like you to get to know Caridwen better, to, to allow her to teach you if you are prepared to hear what she has to say. So I will be doing these live streams on a regular basis now. Um, you will also see some of our priestesses doing meditations on this channel. And I hope that you are enjoying what we are preparing for you. Um, if you do, click a like, click a subscribe, whatever people do on these channels, and, and join us again. And I will tell you a little bit more about how I see Goddess Caridwin. And I know that there are thousands and thousands of people working with her and each and every one of them is called by her. And there's so many more called each and every day. Caridwen Duthdi Badakamanaur Gadani. Beloved Goddess Caridwen, in these dark times, give us your strength and your protection. Shield us from all that is not to the highest good of us and allow us to see very clearly what our path is, into the spiral, into the center of our heart, and into the center of your knowledge. So more to be, blessed be.